What's going on YouTube? This is what would Josh do. I cannot find the SD card that goes in my little recorder here and uh, sorry about the lighting. The monitor's making everything else dark. This is gonna be a video installing the Android L preview. We've got the Nexus 7 2013. Uh, you can't use a 2012 unfortunately and you have to have a Nexus 5 which I have right here. I've already backed up all of my stuff and put it on a Minova micro SD card reader. You can all use other external media sources and we've got our Nexus 5 here. In the description, I'm gonna have a few links. So, one of the links is this one, which takes you to this thing that says, get the SDK, browse samples, watch videos. So when you click get SDK, you don't have to download this one right here. You need to go down to view all downloads and sizes. And then you need to download the platform SDK tools only and then you'll find Windows uh, Installer R23. I'm not gonna get into all that. If you wanna learn how to set up the SDK the way I set mine up, you can go to is.gd slash Android SDK. The A is capital and so is the SDK. I'll put it up on the screen. Okay, so after you have the SDK, you need to open up your SDK. So on Windows 8, you'll, you'll do Windows Q and then you'll type in SDK. And then you'll see SDK Manager right there. So we're gonna go ahead and launch that. Now, I recommend opening it full screen, and then when you're in full screen, hit deselect all. So we'll go here, and after you hit deselect all, you need to go to this one where it says Android L API 20 L preview. Check that little box, and then down here, hit install. I've already installed it to save time, but whenever you install it, uh, hit accept license at the right of a little pop-up screen, and just wait, it'll take a minute. Okay, so that's done. This is our first time doing this. In preparation, I have downloaded some files. I will also link to this one right here to setting up the SDK. Uh, download the SDK, we've already done that. Download the L uh, developer preview, we've already done a, that as well. Uh, accept the license, we, that's what I was telling you about where you had to click accept license. Now, it says right here that it works on Nexus 5 and Nexus 7 2013. So here is where you'll download the previews. You've got a .tgz file for both the Razer and the Hammerhead. Hammerhead being the Nexus 5 and the Razer, Razer being the Nexus 7. We downloaded those, as you can see right here, Hammerhead LPV79 and then Razer LPV79. They are weighing in at about 430 to 440 megabytes per file. So then we're gonna go back down here and it says, revert a device to factory specifications, set up AVD, to set up AVD, use the emulator to build and test apps for the L preview. I have n I don't use the AVD, so that's that's going to be. What is AVD? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we downloaded those files. So let's do the Hammerhead first, which is the Nexus Seven, and it opens up in Seven Zip. If you don't have Seven Zip. I highly recommend installing it. It's a free open source thing. So we're gonna take this and drag it to our desktop. Depending on how fast your computer is, this might take a minute. So let's, that's done. And then we're gonna go here and we're gonna take Hammerhead, put it on our desktop. Okay, nice. So we don't even have to worry about all the AVD stuff. That's just for developers. Don't even sweat the AVD. So this is important. This is very important. All these files right here, you need to hit Control A and then hit Control X. And then you need to go back to your platform tools that has your ADB and your Fastboot and you need to paste that in there. Okay, so now you need to grab a, a cable and you need to hold the volume down and the power button on your Nexus 5. And then you can go, you don't have to worry about it, just keep it on start. So now we're gonna plug in our phone we backed up our apps before we did this. This is going to erase your phone completely, so make sure that you have a backup of your phone. I just did my apps, because I didn't even have custom recovery, so I backed up my apps, that's all I'm worried about. And then on here you'll find a file called Flash All. Just double click on that, and now it's gonna send the new bootloader, the new uh, ROM, it's going to erase our phone, it's going to do all this stuff. So now you'll just wait. All right, so the computer's done. You can exit this out. We're gonna go ahead and grab our Nexus 7 and do the same exact thing. 
Well, let's wait till this boots up. And let's see what the first boot up looks like. So they changed the startup screen. It's like a little swirling thing now. Same colors as they had before. Go ahead and bring you down just a little bit. This is taking quite a while, actually. Oh, it just vibrated. Hopefully we're getting somewhere. Oh, nice. That looks backwards on there. Is it? Hopefully it's not backwards in the video. That would suck. Hold on. No, it's just when I flip the video upside down, then it looks backwards. Okay, so English, United States. Uh, activating, so now I gotta wait for this. Warning, this is a preview image of the Android, this is a preview version of the Android system image and is subject to change the use of the system is governed by the Android SDK preview license and it's not a stable release so okay if you have yours on a GSM carrier then like T-Mobile you won't see the screen this is only if you have it on a CDMA carrier we can select our network now give you a new keyboard too that looks pretty sick uh, slick can't even say it slick all right, so we're going to go ahead and connect to our network here. Do you have a Google account? Yes. Restore and connect to known Wi-Fi networks. Cool. After you put in your information, you hit the little arrow, and then a little screen will pop up, and you just hit OK. All right, and this is the normal screen that you see a lot. Uh, keep me up to date. I don't like to have that option checked. Restore previous backups to this device. I'm not going to go ahead and do that because I don't want it to download a crap ton of apps. All right, Google now, okay, yes, I'm in. Okay, and okay. And there's your familiar home screen, but you will notice that the buttons are different. They are different. Like this is your recent apps, this is your home and that's your back. So, and then the app drawer looks about the same. This is way different way different it's got like your Wi-Fi Bluetooth off connected to our network um, our, our Sprint um, airplane mode notifications cast my screen so let me turn my Chromecast on okay I just plugged in my Chromecast and it's not finding it so they may not have updated the Chromecast to support this just yet but that's how that would work And of course, here's your brightness to turn it up and down. And then there's auto brightness. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the settings button to jump into the settings. One thing while I was watching the video, the preview last night, is I think that's a profile button. The contact doesn't exist. So yeah, it's probably a profile button. And settings look a lot different than before. Wi-Fi looks about the same. Under advanced, you have scanning always available. Wi-Fi optimization. Below that is your IP address and your MAC address. So I'm not gonna show that. Let's go back out of here. You got data usage, NFC and more. Airplane mode, Android Beam, tethering. Set up hotspot, Bluetooth tethering. Sell all that stuff from before. Uh, display, all that stuff's there. Cast screen, sound notification, storage. Well, I have the 32 gig Nexus 5. Sorry, I know it's really dark. Uh, I should I usually record upstairs, but my computer's down here and I wanted to get this out very quickly So uh, tap to pay location about so I wonder if about phone you still tap the build number Yes, so now you are a developer Another thing I'm curious about is what does it say Android version L? So it doesn't give you like uh, Android 1. Point, you know 4.5 or whatever it just gives you Android L and there's my baseband. I don't know if that's different. Still 340 kernel, build number LPV79. All right, so let's go ahead and do that same exact process to the Nexus 7. All right, so we got our Nexus 7 here. Uh, I wanted to show you the lock screen real quick. So when you unlock it, it's just like at the developer uh, thing yesterday. 
So you now my picture showing up, and if I press on my picture right here, it'll take me to my contact once I unlock my phone. Of course, it shows my phone number, so I'm not going to show that. But yeah, it'll take you to your personal contact. So uh, if you have multiple profiles, that might be a profile switching button. I don't know. There's the Gmail notification that I just got. So I'll go ahead and press on that. Gmail looks similar, so maybe it'll update in the App Store. We'll see. Yes, a ton of the apps have updates. A ton of them. Oh, cool. Uh, when I unlocked it, it showed me like a little notification saying uh, the application has been updated, Google camera updated. This is all through the notifications. All right, before I make this video like really, really long, let's go ahead and get this one to uh, bootloader, which is the same volume down and power. And then you connect your phone to, or your tablet to your computer. This is very important. You need to open up the SDK right here and then under the platform tools well wait till it loads everything and then hit deselect all go to the platform tools and hit delete package and then yes because basically all those files we transferred for the flash all for the nexus 5 will be in there and you're you may not know exactly which files to delete so we deleted it now we're going to check that box again and hit install package and accept the license and it's going to install it and then we're gonna have a fresh, clean platform tools folder that won't have other stuff in there. All right, so now if we go to our shortcut that we made for our platform tools, you'll see that it's clean. There's nothing in there. So now we need to take the, go to our downloads folder, go to the Razer, since the Hammerhead was the Nexus 5, and we'll take that, put it on our desktop. And when that's done, we will grab the this file and put it somewhere on our desktop. And the, in this file is the ones you need to go control A, control X, just like the Nexus 5, and then go to your platform tools and paste that. And then go to flash all, and it says writing bootloader, rebooting to bootloader. And now this is going to do all the stuff the Nexus 5 did, and we're gonna get a quick look at how this works, and we're gonna end the video. Now, I wanna go ahead and say that I'm gonna play with this extensively today and tomorrow, and hopefully tomorrow I will be able to post an update on you know what I think about it maybe some features that I discover after I've had time to play with it you know and much better lighting and much better video quality we'll we'll take a look at Android L and see what it has to offer that we you know may have not may have missed at this time and also you can take these notifications and swipe them away that's so freaking cool that is awesome. There's a brand new one right there, application updated. This is why you get a Nexus 5 as a phone and a Nexus 7 as a tablet. This is why you do this. So you get to play with stuff like this instead of waiting on Samsung or HTC or any other, you know, uh, tablet or phone out there to update their skin on top of the latest version of Android. So now it's erasing the user data, which uh, we also backed up all of our apps on here again you can use a little micro SD card reader I did a video on this or you can use a LeafBridge flash drive which has micro USB OTG on one end and full-size USB on the other or you can use the pluggable thing I actually use the pluggable thing on here while I was using the Minova SD card on here that way I could have both of them backing up to external storage because if you back up your apps on the internal storage this process wipes your internal storage so you've lost everything you backed up you need to back it up and then move it over to a uh, external storage device like a micro SD card uh, or a flash drive. You can use like this little OTG cable right here that's plugged into your phone. This part goes to a flash drive and you can back up all of your apps onto a flash drive such as something like this. So now we're going to let this boot up and we will be done. All right, this video is coming to an end. I just wanted to show you what it looks like on the Nexus 7 as well as the Nexus 5. All right, we're going to sign into our 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi here. I'm talking a little bit to the left, so the audio might be a little bit on the left side. Sorry about that. Here we go. I'll stand right over the microphone. So, uh, Also, this is the 
Same thing as the Nexus 5. Again, you'll hit the little arrow to confirm it, and then you'll hit OK. So that's how that works. One thing I'm really not enjoying about this already is the fact that even when you hold down the power button, it's just like before. All you have is power off. You don't have any reboot options. So we're going to have to root this thing whenever there's an um, updated CF auto root or an updated recovery or something. And then we're going to have to install the uh, exposed framework. And then we're going to have to install the advanced power menu module. All right, in here, like before, we're going to I uncheck that. Of course, you can do what you want to do. Setup is complete. OK. OK. And yeah, so it's just like on our thing. So the Wi-Fi cast screen, I don't have the Chromecast is not updated yet, as I said earlier. Um, so when you first swipe down one time, you get that. And then you swipe down again to get everything else. And then you can go to your settings and whoa. So on the tablet, that does look different. Uh, I'm going to do a compare more in-depth comparison um, showing the, you know, and better lighting and stuff than this. This is, like I said, a really quick video. So they made the tablet version look a little different than, you know what, just whatever. Let's do it. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I turned it off. That's right. So developer options, and then you've got all the stuff in here you can mess with. So anyways, if you enjoyed the video, as always, please do me a huge favor and give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, oh, is that a mute button for real? Oh, that just brings up. Oh, do not disturb. Uh, again, I'm going to play with this. I'm going to come back with a review or like a, I don't know, like my first day with Android uh, L. And we'll go to the settings on this one real quick just to show you again. This one is like a grid layout and this one's straight up and down. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this up with another video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out. This was just the how to install. A first a, a real first look upstairs with much better lighting will be tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out.